Welcome back to the Godot Report. The Godot's for quarter two of 2021 is finally here. This report focuses on the Godot engine across Itch, YouTube, and GitHub. A total of 868 games were published this quarter. That's a 15% increase from last quarter. The huge spike on the right is the GMTK Game Jam. As for the Godot GitHub, 621 bug reports or feature requests were created during this period, and 638 issues were closed. An active GitHub is a healthy GitHub. The full report has a ton more interesting stats, including Godot's growth on YouTube and Reddit. I will link the full report down in the description. As most of you know, the big news for the Godot 4.0 update is the rendering engine rewrite. They are moving away from OpenGL and instead will use the highly performant Vulkan. Along with the Vulkan overhaul, the other 3D features like occlusion calling and auto lod, which should greatly increase 3D performance compared to the current version. They've been working on this update for more than two years. It's a big update. Well, the devs announced that Godot 4.0 will not ship with any OpenGL support. That has been pushed back to version 4.1 at the earliest. Originally, the plan was for 4.0 to support Vulkan with the option of GLES 2 for older hardware. But as time has gone on, they have realized that GLES 3 is the better direction to take. And there's a few reasons for this. On desktop, any hardware that doesn't support GLES 3 is too old to even run a modern game engine. Older phones that don't support it have most likely reached the end of their battery life cycle. And on the web, the major limiting factor was the Safari web browser, which has since begun the early stages of GLES 3 support. They plan on optimizing the GLES 3 version for older hardware, similar to what the current version of Godot does with GLES 2. If your project requires GLES 2, Godot 3 will still be maintained for the foreseeable future. This next bit of news is regarding Blender. Blender is an open source 3D modeling and animation software. It actually does so much more than that, but as a game developer, that's mostly what I use it for. The company Adobe announced that they will join the Blender Foundation's development fund as a corporate gold member. Adobe is the company behind such software as Adobe Photoshop, Premiere, and Substance Painter. For any of you who watch Twitch, this next story may be of interest. On Twitch's ideas and suggestions forums, there's a proposal to add a Godot engine tag. This could help viewers find streams that relate to Godot. There are already tags for Unity and Unreal, so I think with enough votes and buzz, Twitch might actually do it. You just need to sign in with your Twitch account and you can vote for it. I'll provide the link in the description. And really quick, let me drop a plug for my own Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash codingkaiju. I mostly livestream game development. If you're interested, give me a follow on there. Union Bytes Painter is now in early access. It's an easy to use and fast tool for creating sprites, pixel art, and low res textures for 3D models. It is capable of multi-channel editing and instant visualization in the Godot engine. Zoomy is an add-on that displays zoom levels and mouse position within the canvas as icons and a status bar. The Doe Card Game Framework provides a well-designed, statically typed, fully commented classes and scenes which you can plug into any potential card game to handle typical behavior expected from cards in a game in a polished manner. Scaling Canvas Layer provides a custom canvas layer that scales the viewport contents to always cover the full window with no black bars, no content reveal, and no distortions. Child Canvas Item Nodes, i.e. UI, can also be scaled independently of the content. In Funk Duck, play as a legendary funk artist, Ducky Wonder. Get the band back together and take revenge on the music corporation that did you dirty. Crack your way through three unique worlds with a total of 17 handcrafted, artisanal, grass-fed levels. Out of the Ashes is a 3D ARPG in Godot. Not actually a DOS game takes the visuals of Rogue and other DOS slash C64 classics and spices them up with modern game mechanics and approachability.
Goop Loop is a physics-based platformer with a simple mechanic that's difficult to master. You jump and stick. Physics does the rest. Imagine a hamster ball, but with a giant booger or something like that. There's also commentary to egg you on. It's a silly, fun, rage-inducing challenge. Roy Webb, couch potato extraordinaire, was sitting amidst his pile of useless old tat one day when suddenly a strange wind swept through the room and catapulted his beloved possessions into a strange land only known to him as the outdoors. Faced with the loss of his only source of joy in his life, Roy must venture forth and retrieve his hoard before someone else finds it and flogs it on eBay. In a world without its colors, stories are told about a time when life was bright and radiant, when the sunlight was warm and nature was strong. While Iris is still young and their world has always been dull and faded, these stories inspire them to dream of a better future. Could these dreams be a sign of change? Join Iris as they adventure through the unknown in search of the six lost crystals to make the world colorful once again. A 3D platformer about seeing the world in a new way and making a change. That's all for you this week. Like the video? Leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching.